Our criminal justice system is insane. It's dangerous. It's harmful. And it is destroying the fabric of our city. Time and again, our police officers make an arrest. And then the person who is arrested for assault, felonious assault, robberies, and gun possession, they're finding themselves back on the street within days, if not hours, after arrest. Eric Adams, New York Mayor. My friends, the reason we are here in New York is because you have Democrats, you have citizens calling for some relief from this pain. And we are here not to use anyone, but to uplift the voices of brave people who are here to tell their story. Ms. Brame, do you feel used in this hearing? Gentleman is recognized. Ms. Brame, do you feel used? Absolutely not. Ms. Harrison? A, I'm a willing participant. Ms. Harrison, do you feel used? Tell you what, let me ask you this way. Do you feel more used by this committee hearing, or do you feel more used by a criminal justice system that allowed people to kill people that you love and care about with no consequence? The latter, and I'm beyond grateful for the opportunity to testify here on behalf of victims because the Democrat Party, including Mr. Nadler and everybody here today, has ignored us in this city. And we need federal oversight. We need help. We're not getting well, any kind of help. And I, the services that she wants to keep funding are not being provided to the victims. I have a woman sitting outside who is a victim of domestic violence who was conned by an immigrant and she is receiving no services whatsoever. So until we get an, a thorough audit to the outcomes of the services being provided, no. We need, we need to find out what's going wrong and get the services to where they need to be. I am not here to criticize any New Yorkers except maybe one and that's because so many New Yorkers will soon become Florida voters. This is an iconic city. It's actually our nation's most iconic mm -hmm. city. And it's not because of the beautiful architecture, and it's not because of the geography. It is because the sense of hustle that is so inherent to the people who come to New York to achieve their dreams. And increasingly, that hustle is being replaced with fear. Uh, uh, Mr. Holt, Councilman Holden, you and I are from different parties. If we talked about a thousand things, we'd probably disagree about a vast majority of them. But here's my simple question for you. Is fear a rising feature of life in New York, or is fear a declining feature of life in New York? It, it is um, increasingly worrisome what we're going through in New York City. Fear is an everyday event in New York City. Taking the subway. My wife is Asian American. She will not get on a New York City subway. My daughter will not get on a New York City subway for fear because many Asian Americans have been attacked. But Mr. Kessler says there's just a lot of people here in Manhattan. You just have to take it. You right. just have to understand that this is going to be a violent place. Which I found, I found that insulting. Uh, well, Mr. DiGiacomo, you're here as the voice of, of law enforcement in, in many ways. And since the days of Cain and Abel, there has constantly been a violent criminal element as some feature of American society. And the lives we all get to live are lashed to whether or not we put that violent criminal element in charge or whether or not we constrain it for the sake of people who want freedom. And so my question for you is, when the day one memo of Alvin Bragg changes the way resisting arrest is treated so people can resist arrest against law enforcement and not uh, actually face a consequence for that. What does that do to the enterprise of policing? Well, it makes the, uh, the officers and the detectives on the street, their job, that much harder. Uh, everything becomes confrontational or physical, and they put themselves, the police officers and detectives, are in harm's way. Well, now, we, we don't want to do that, but I have only, only a moment left, and I have to address this matter of, of crime rates that my colleagues keep talking about, and to the extent that there is an impact on crime rates in major cities, I would suggest that that is exactly what you get with the Sorosization of the United States justice system. And in places like New Orleans, Louisiana, in places like Tampa, Florida, in Jacksonville, Florida, in Tucson, Arizona, increasingly George Soros is putting in upwards of $40 million to elect 75 uh, DAs to be able to engage in these downgrades. And by the way, not only are they downgrading 
the violent things, they can't even win the cases they try. Mr. Holden, you pointed out the fact that Alvin Bragg is actually terrible at losing in court. And since I don't have time, I would ask you for the record, since he keeps losing all of his cases, we might opine as to why, and we might seek a better utilization of the federal resources that we provide. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Gentleman yields.